All right, Vicky, whenever you're ready. There's an underworld of mystery that is shrouded by glitter and costumes. This titillating cultural empire was once considered an obscenity. Now with many followers of this nostalgic dance form, it is slowly unveiling itself to the public eye once more. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the lost art form of entertainment called burlesque. I will teach you about the roots of the art form and its origins in Europe, the different ways the flirtatious craft was utilized and its influences in society now. <clears throat> the Oxford English Dictionary defines burlesque as a parody or imitation of something in an absurd way. The root comes from the Italian word burlesco, meaning joke. Its purpose was to imitate or make a mockery of other art or news. Burlesque was intentionally ridiculous. It imitated many styles of entertainment from artists and writers with absurd descriptions. As stated by Adam Davenport in the Dictionary of Drama, I thought your aim was but to make us laugh, to which Burlesque replied, those who think so but understand me have. The term was popularized in the early 16th century by Francesco Berni. In his opera Burlesque, it was in his honor the expression was coined as Puesi Bernesca. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Francesco Berni was a poet and a translator who was well known for his distinctive style of burlesque, which was imitated by many other poets after him. In the 17th century, European burlesque was used to mock the nobility. for the historical register for the year of 1736 had this to say. It is having a foolish man call a king tedious, but allowing such a blunder because of his character on stage. Burlesque entertainment relied on type of knowledge the, burlesque, um, the audience possessed. High burlesque was aimed towards those with superior literacy and competency of worldly affairs. Low burlesque mocked serious subjects with informal vernacular in the Encyclopedia of Britain in the Hungarian Age, low burlesque, which presents serious subjects as insignificant, were fairly rare. High burlesque were often a mock of heroic or mock of epic works. <clears throat> in the 1840s, British burlesque made its way to New York through traveling performance groups. of burlesque by Lucia Cabellas and Martin Orville, Americans got their first case of controversial art form of burlesque through the performance of Lydia Thompson in her stage troupe, the, the British Blondes, who arrived in New York in 1868. It was these women who popularized the scandalous flesh-colored types, knowing full well that English ladies never show their skin in public. America turned burlesque into variety entertainment for adults. New York organized their burlesque like a minstrel show, incorporating its elements and structures for various acts. In a typical burlesque show, you would expect to see song and dance, song and comic sketches, acrobats, magic, solo singers, chorus numbers, mock politics, popular plays, concluded by exotic dancers, wrestling, or boxing. <clears throat> In her interview for Time Magazine, Leslie Zemeckis, director of the documentary Behind Early Q, tells us seven things we didn't know about burlesque. that burlesque comedians were funny men who couldn't get work anywhere else. Actually, <clears throat> these comedies, comedians were 
were legends who were regulars on burlesque stage, such as Red Skelton, Jackie Gleason, and the dynamic duo Abbott and Costello, with their ever popular comic routine, Who's On First? The uninhibited atmosphere of the burlesque cabarets allowed general public easy access to alcohol. It was the prohibition that helped out, who helped put burlesque out of business in the 1940s. Burlesque went silent after the prohibition, as stated by Alana Cooper Smith and Burlesque, the grand tradition and its critics for public dissent in film. As of 1942, theaters closed under a Supreme Court ruling by Justice Levy. The Republic, Gaiety in Manhattan, and the Star in Brooklyn closed, ending a part of theatrical history. Recently, a revival of the burlesque art has come about, often referred to as neo-burlesque, this new generation for the nostalgia of the spectacle and glamour of, nostalgia of American classic burlesque first formed a small underground following of the art. Edward Gutman, in his article On Tour, French com comedy burlesque revival, for the <coughs> Gate magazine had this to say. The burlesque revival that kicked off the 90s was a shot of adrenaline to the world of striptease. No longer playing to a strictly stag audience, women created their own routines and brought attitude, mischief, and a playful circus-like showmanship. In the early 1990s, the introduction of this art form to the public came with cinemas, nightclubs, and conventions. Burlesque cults united into businesses to form the Velvet Hammer troupe of Los Angeles, the Shim Shamets of New Orleans, and Ivan Kane's Royal Jolly Burlesque nightclub at Robot Atlantic City. New performers, have surfaced in the ever-growing popularity of this burlesque trend following the performance groups Cabaret, Red Light, Julie Atlas Moose, and Dita Von Tees in her book, A Brief History of Burlesque. <clears throat> Dita Von Tees says, times have changed. When I read histories, it seems to me that every great burlesker was arrested on obscenity charges. Maybe this, maybe it's the time for less than the art of its stunts. <clears throat> As you can see, burlesque is not only a refined art of dance with props, it was so much more than that. It was a way to laugh at the pompous and pathetic through a variety of stand-up and adult appeal. Burlesque allowed people to have fun and let loose their inhibitions when there wasn't much to be happy about. Although there are some who are trying to bring it back, the form of entertainment now known as burlesque has limited itself from variety entertainment to a dance form. Few clubs show true burlesque show anymore, but slowly it's coming back to its original vigor. Jason, could you tell us what you thought of the speech since uh, 
Martin's not going to be here today. Maybe you could just give us a few comments. Yeah. Um, I think it could have been a lot more, uh, I don't want to say interesting, but the content was good. Like the, It was a cool subject, but I think it would have been a little bit better if there wasn't so much reading off the notes. I know that you depended on that a lot, mm -hmm. but it kind of takes away from the speech and the subject because it's almost like there's a disconnection from the speaker and the audience. Um, so it, it sucks that the clicker was giving you trouble also, which kind of made things slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think for the next speech you can work on like eye contact and um, body language. <clears throat> yeah, but overall, good job. Okay. You know, most of the content stuff is pretty solid. You've got a lot of research there. It's well organized. Uh, you do have some interesting stories, and you've even got some interesting descriptions to go along with it. Uh, but i got to agree with Jason. The delivery of it is kind of undercutting the whole goal here. I'm talking about burlesque, which is exciting and interesting and unique, and you're reading it like it's uh, a chore. <laughs> you're, you're just kind of going through it, and so we're, we're not getting the kick out of it that we ought to be getting. It's not, you're not talking to us, you're reading at us, in, and you're not even reading at us, you're reading in front of us, because it really feels like you are disengaged there, and that and that's that's the biggest criticism here. Now that wasn't a huge part of uh, the, the material that we were working on here, but it's a pretty important part when you want the audience to be interested in what you're talking about. Uh, I, think, I think you get uh, tied up in some of the, the research material and you want to get it right. And instead, I think what you need to do is instead maybe cut back on some of the research material and tell some stories about them. Uh, you mentioned the uh, troop of uh, women who came in to America. That was the first American's exposure to burlesque. There's got to be a, uh, an interesting story about when they appeared on stage the first time or uh, some brouhaha that uh, blew up at that. And you should just tell us that story instead of reading the words that came from the researcher that talked about these kinds of things. Um, we got the historical information and you're talking about high burlesque and low burlesque. Give us an example of uh, some kind of routine that somebody would have done in low burlesque or high burlesque to make it a little bit more involving. When you mention all of those, well, you know what? I know who Red Skelton is and Jackie Gleason and those other folks are, but I'll bet a lot of people in here are unfamiliar because they're older time folks and you know, it's like, well, who are you talking about? You know, uh, they might not have any familiarity with that. And uh, that's where maybe a couple more of those visualizations would have been good. You know, uh, you could, you know, Red Skelton who had a television show for 20 years and Jackie Gleason who practically invented the sitcom, you know, all came from the uh, burlesque world and blah, 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 something along those lines uh, to, to kind of invigorate it a little bit. As it is, it seems like it's sort of perfunctory. Mm -hmm. uh, you describe out of it and Costello, for instance, and you say they're famous, who's on first... Uh, Routine. We don't want you to do who's on first the whole time. You know that take ten minutes. You know, but you know maybe you could do a couple of lines from it just to show what it was like, so that people know. I, I assume most people probably know, but I don't know that everybody. How many of you know who's on first? Love it. So that's about you know half or third of the class. You know, so a couple of lines so that people know. Well, what's I don't get it. You know, what what's funny about it? What's interesting about it? To, to make it more lively. Like I said, all the structure stuff is pretty good. I thought you handled the problem the first time with the clicker pretty well. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Maybe the battery's low or maybe you're just too far away because mm -hmm. you're standing on the opposite side there and if you're on the, in, the inside, for instance, it might not be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that you might want to do in the future is if something like that happens, you got to improvise a little bit. I don't think you want to go over there and stand and give your speech, mm -hmm. but you know what? Nathan's sitting right there. He's a pretty friendly guy. Drag mm -hmm. him up and ask him to push the cursor for you and point to him when you need the cursor to move, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Just think a little bit about those kinds of things. I know I didn't think you panicked, but and I thought you handled it pretty well at first, but it seemed like you're missing an opportunity and and once that happened, you kind of pulled back a little bit more and withdrew a little bit more from the presentation. Mm -hmm. So, well, you'll see how it looks. 